God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. If you're walking through to get there. Um, so he spent his week out there in the mountains and um, he's guest preaching at an Episcopal church up there today and then he'll be back in the office on Tuesday. So we'll pray for his safe return. Um, a few other announcements. Salt, our St. Andrew's Lutheran teams won't be meeting today because today is Father's Day. So happy Father's Day, everybody. Um, we'll be acknowledging that uh, a little bit later in the service as well. In the week ahead, all you have to remember is 10 o'clock, because Monday is Lutheran World Relief Quilt is at 10 o'clock, Tuesday is Bible study at 10 o'clock, and Wednesday is quilting and crafting class at 10 o'clock. So we have something amazing happening all those days at 10 o'clock um, for you to come be a part of it. Um, next weekend is our final Stephen Ministry Forum. These have been wonderful forums about the end of life and all the issues that come with end of life. Um, and the final one, the presenter is my husband, Kevin, uh, who has been a hospice chaplain for the last 15 years, and he's going to be talking about family dynamics at the end of life. Um, so again, we want to thank our Stephen ministers for all their great work organizing these um, forums, and you can RSVP for that on the back of the connection card. For those of you who need to be online, it'll also be available via Zoom. Um, so let us know, and we'll get you that Zoom link. 
We have our July, August, and September 2023 Christ in Our Home devotional books available too. Um, those are free devotional books. We have regular size and large print. It's a great way to add a daily devotion into your life. You can pick one of those as up as you leave today. And then a few acknowledgments up here. Um, we have this beautiful bouquet of flowers. Aren't these, they just seem extra beautiful today. Um, that were given by Kathy Hall in memory of George Blake for Father's Day. So that's our, our flowers on the altar today. And then I got to share the announcement last week, but we officially have our rose on the altar this weekend, given in celebration of the birth of Sky Violet Cornejo Tweet, born on June 10th to proud parents Melanie and Kyle. Um, so we give thanks to God uh, for that birth and um, for the new addition to their family and to our community. We also have one prayer quote today. This is from Mike for Mike Graham from the Geitz family, who will be having heart bypass surgery. So prayers are for comfort and healing. We'll have this prayer quote out in the courtyard following the service, so you can tie a knot and say a prayer. Um, as you were coming in, you might have noticed there were still a few left, a few things left. But Coley Adams made coffee and homemade um, sour cream coffee cake and muffins today. Oh, wow. I can't promise there's enough for everyone, but there might be some left, and maybe if we share, people can have some of that. Um, so that was a very fun treat, and so grateful for Coley for doing that for us um, today as well. And then we have some celebrities in our midst today. Last week, I know. Last week we shared the video from CBS 8 News about Virginia and Roger. Um, as celebrating their anniversary, and today is their 46th wedding anniversary. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and so um, we are so happy that you're celebrating your anniversary with us. Would you like a special prayer and blessing for you today? Okay. If you haven't had a chance yet to watch the news segment where Roger and Virginia are interviewed, um, you can find it on our Facebook page or on CBS. 8. News, whatever their website is. Um, please go and watch it. It's a little bit about an amazing story about this amazing couple. Um, so go check that out. We'll say a special prayer for you two today. God, we thank you for the love that's poured into our lives, and we thank you for the love um, that Roger and Virginia have for each other and the love we get to share today in honor of their anniversary. So we pray for your special blessings upon them, blessings of joy and smiles and hugs. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, and then um, one other announcement. I'm going to share this during the prayer time as well. Um, but at 10.30 today is something very important is happening. Um, we have the McMullen family, uh, not not the ones who are members here, but the uh, Ty and Kimmy McMullen. They and their three kids have been worshiping with us um, fairly regularly throughout the spring. Um, they are from Orange County, but have been here in the San Diego area because their baby, Zephyr, has been in the hospital awaiting a heart transplant. And um, I received the news yesterday that at 10.30 today, the baby's going in. Um, for the heart transplant procedure. And so I want to make sure we take a moment to stop at 1030 and pray with and for them, as well as for um, the family of the donor, the heart donor. Um, so we're going to take a moment to push pause and say prayers for that. But they wanted to share that news with you all today um, and ask to be lifted up in prayer. So we'll do that a little bit later <clears throat> at 1030. I'm going to keep an eye on my watch. But if you all notice that it's 1030 and I haven't acknowledged it yet, you can signal me. Even if it's in my sermon, we'll, we'll stop and say that. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Thank you, ma'am. I'm on my passing away. I'm my cousin Khan. Yes, and we'll also say during prayer time, special prayers for Virginia and her family as they're grieving the loss of her cousin Connie this last week. All right, so I think those are all of our announcements. Make sure to fill out that blue connection card. <coughs> Let us know you're worshiping with us. Oh, you want to give your announcement there too? On the back, um, there's boxes to check as well as room for prayer requests. And then finally, I'm excited to bring up our congregational president, Rick Bushor. <clears throat> Rick did an amazing job um, leading us through our annual meeting last week. And um, 
He gets to come up and share some good news today. <clears throat> it's so fun to share good news, and I'm really happy that Rick gets to, gets to do that on our behalf. I'm really happy to be here, too. Um, about a week ago, we announced, uh, we, we started a, uh, a mid-year stewardship drive, and the, uh, the reason for that drive was to uh, help us raise money to make our worship spaces a little more accessible than they are now by installing automatic door openers on uh, that door back in the corner and one of the and the door that leads to the parking lot in the sanctuary and uh, we set a goal of twenty two thousand dollars I think it was for that and as of this morning I think we've ra we've raised um, twenty two thousand dollars. You know, stewardship isn't just uh, two months in the fall and, and uh, a big drive around Thanksgiving. And uh, stewardship is uh, is in, in, is a big part of the church year, the entire year, and that's why we that's why we um, wanted to do this during uh, the summer when uh, people aren't normally thinking about uh, about stewardship. So thank all I thank all of you for. Uh, for your for your offerings for this, even though we reached our goal, we're going to continue the drive through the end of the month, I think. And uh, there are other things that we could use besides those two doors. For instance, um, some uh, equipment for uh, people who have trouble hearing, uh, which over in the sanctuary includes just about everyone because the pastor's <laughs> headsets don't work very well. <laughs> Okay, uh, so if you uh, put something in your offering and uh, designate it for the, uh, for the accessibility project that we're doing, we're going to go ahead and accept that check. We won't return it to you, okay? So thank you. Thanks again. Uh, this, of all the congregations I've been in, this is truly one, uh, I'm truly blessed to be here with uh, this group of generous folks. Thank you. Thank you for that, and now we'll continue with our call to worship from Harmonics.
confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. <coughs> Resting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sins. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together we sing our opening song, Take My Life.
The reading is from Romans, the fifth chapter. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we, are, while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Word of God, word of life. And our Holy Gospel for today is according to St. Matthew. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, for they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned the 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12, Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and redeemer. Amen. This last week, a friend of mine reached out to me needing to talk. He and his wife relocated to the Midwest from Los Angeles a few years ago to be closer to her family. Since moving there, they have been through some pretty intense ups and downs with buying a home, changing jobs, becoming foster parents, and all that goes along with settling into life in a small town. But he texted me because he was feeling frustrated, because he felt like he was carrying some expectations that just weren't getting met. Can any of you relate to that? He's feeling like he tries to prioritize following through with his commitments, and doing the things he says he will do for others in his life. But he didn't really feel like the others were doing the same in return. And he was feeling hurt and frustrated about that. I can certainly relate to those kinds of feelings too. I could actually point to several specific times in my life when I felt like that. Drained, disappointed, depleted, maybe even hurt. I know that in my case, it is because over the course of my adult life, I've had a very complicated relationship with the word no. <laughs> Being a pastor doesn't always help. How about that? Does anyone else have that struggle too with saying no? Yeah. Last night when I said this, Rachel Line was in the room and she yelled from the back of the room when I asked, does anyone have a hard time saying no? Rachel Line said no. <laughs> I know that for me, it's always important when I find myself 
struggling that I step back and reflect and ask myself, what is motivating me? And I also think it's important for us as a church to make sure that we take the time to reflect and ask what our motivations are as well. Are we carrying uncommunicated expectations of our ministries, of our neighbors? Is it 10.30? Okay, great, let's stop and pray. God, we pray especially for baby Zephyr and his family as they enter into this time of surgery. We pray for all the doctors and nurses and hospital staff who will be caring for them. We also um, pray your comfort um, for the family experiencing grief and loss um, so that this heart could be given and donated to baby Zephyr. So we pray for your presence to be with all those connected and involved. And we thank you for your promise to be with us in all circumstances. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for seeing me. So again, we ask ourselves, are we carrying any uncommunicated expectations of our ministries or of our neighbors? Are we carrying any unmet expectations of God? Author and social worker Brene Brown says that expectations are resentments waiting to happen. That stunned me a little bit the first time that I read that. And I was thinking about this dynamic of life and relationships when I read through our gospel text for this weekend. I think that Jesus' directions to the disciples in this passage continue to be relevant for us as followers of Jesus today. In this passage, Jesus sees that there are so many people in need of healing and who need to hear the good news of God's love. Jesus says, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So he equips the disciples to go out and carry on the work that he himself has been doing. According to this passage, it says that Jesus gives them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. And Jesus was also very specific about where they were and were not to go. And if you read ahead a little bit more, he also gave some very specific instructions on how they were to respond when people either did or didn't welcome them. He said that if they are welcomed, then they are to accept that hospitality. But he also says, if anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Perhaps this is Jesus' way of helping the disciples manage their own expectations of what will happen as they are sent out on these assignments. One would expect that when you show up saying, hey, this guy Jesus gave me the power to cast out demons and heal all your illnesses, so line up, everyone. One might expect that people would be excited or grateful to be a part of that. Wouldn't everyone want to get that kind of good news? But of course, Jesus knows that's not how it's going to be for them. It certainly wasn't how it was for him. People are more complicated than that. And circumstances were definitely more complicated for Jewish communities in Jesus' time. And then there is the line at the end of the passage where Jesus says, as you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near, cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Jesus makes it very clear that the disciples are being to set, sent out to share God's love and message of redemption without any expectations of how the hearers will respond. And he also makes it very clear that they're not to expect anything in return. They are to give out of the abundance of God's blessings to them and pass those blessings on to others. I remember when I was in seminary, I had a professor who at the time was going through cancer treatments. He shared that when he was first diagnosed, his adult children expressed that they were upset with God. They said things like, Dad, you are a good person. This isn't right. It's not fair. You don't deserve this. These are very appropriate feelings in a situation like that. But being a systematic theologian, 
this professor had spent a lot of time thinking about our expectations of how God is supposed to work in the world and in our lives. That's what he spent his entire career studying and teaching. His response to his adult children was that Jesus didn't come into the world to make the world fair. That God's grace is so much bigger than our limited understanding of fairness. And that instead, Jesus' death and resurrection puts an end to the idea of fairness forever because our reality is rooted in something so much greater. It's rooted in God's eternal and unconditional love and presence today and always. Christian author Max Lucado once wrote, unmet expectations are tough when it's your spouse or significant other, but it's really tough when it's God. And yet, it can be a time of growth and a time of faith and a time of understanding more deeply who God is. For us as followers of Jesus, we remember that we love and serve and we give to God and our neighbors, not because we have some expectation of getting something back in return, or because we have any expectations of what the results are supposed to be. But we carry this message of God's love, forgiveness, and grace out into the world because it was given to us freely without payment or conditions. Although that's not entirely true, there was a cost. We carry this message because Jesus gave his life for us and that his new life on the other side of the cross is also our new life. This will always be the greatest gift we could receive. In the end, it shatters any and every expectation we may hold. It allows us to release our expectations in order to be more present to what God is already doing. This gift of grace goes far beyond even our imagination in its abundance. And it releases us from the sin and guilt that would burden us and hold us captive. This grace accepts us in our frustrations, limitations, and brokenness. And then sends us into the world to serve our neighbors and to give as Christ first gave to us. And so this meal that we celebrate at the table is a place where this grace means that there's room for everyone. Thanks be to God. Amen.
continue with our prayers and we're praying prayers of healing uh, for Ella Schaefer. Ella's with us. She had a procedure on her shoulder this last week. You're doing good though. Healing up all right. So we'll continue to pray for your um, healing and strength following your surgery. Um, also, we're praying for healing and a successful treatment plan for Teresa Sparha. Um, Teresa's with us as well. Um, she received news this last week that she has a mass in her brain and so is awaiting more information from doctors about the plans or next steps, but she appreciates your um, prayers for her as well. Um, again, also prayers that we stopped and prayed for uh, baby Zephyr, so ongoing prayers um, for everyone involved in that heart transplant procedure. And then also prayers of comfort um, for your grief and loss of Virginia's feeling for her family and the loss of her cousin and Connie, right? Right. Okay, good. But prayers of Thanksgiving for your anniversary day as well. At the end of each petition, I'll say, God, in your mercy, and you're welcome to respond by saying, hear our prayer. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. For the church here and around the world, we pray. Seek out disciples and send them out with authority to proclaim good news. Bring healing where there is pain and messages of hope. God, in your mercy, for the earth and all its creatures, we pray, equip farmers, farm workers, and all who labor on the land to produce a harvest. Nourish crops with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Restore lands ruined by pollution or misuse. God, in your mercy, for those who govern, we pray. Empower those who seek peaceful solutions to conflict and embolden those who advocate for all who are oppressed. Work through systems of government to establish justice throughout the world. God, in your mercy, for fathers and father figures, we pray. Console all who long to be fathers, children estranged from their fathers, anyone grieving the death of a father, and fathers who have lost a child. Draw near to all for whom this day stirs up difficult emotions. God, in your mercy. For those who suffer, we pray. Accompany those who feel helpless, alone, or abandoned. Embrace any who long for successful treatment for mental illness or freedom from addiction. Heal those who are sick. We pray now for those we know silently in our hearts. God, in your mercy, Hear our receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. We share a sign of peace and peace to everyone online with us too. Peace be with you wherever you are. <laughs> And at this time, we'll continue with the receiving of the offering. Again, we give thanks to God for all the gifts that make everything we do here possible in Jesus' name. Um, and there's going to be a link posted online for those of you who are with us in the chat. Um, and it's a great time to also turn in those blue connection cards. We'll continue now with our offering song, Lord of All Hopefulness.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Do you have any kids who are willing to help with the children's time today? It would be great. You're going to help me hand things out to people, so that's fun, right? If you want to. Good morning. Okay, so I have in here a bucket of treats. Okay, we have butterscotch candies. Hi. We have Hershey's Kisses. We have Jolly Ranchers. And then for people who can't do sugar, we have Annie's Cheddar Bunnies. And um, we have these today because we're celebrating Father's Day today, right? And so we're giving thanks for all the people in our lives. Maybe they are fathers, but it could be other mentors and people who help us to learn and grow, right? So I wanted to share a story with you about my dad. Um, when I was a kid, my dad used to always be wanting to teach us how to share, right? Sharing is a good lesson, isn't it? And um, so one of the ways he taught us this was he used to, every Veterans Day, the week before Veterans Day, he used to make homemade apple pies for every veteran that he knew. Yeah, isn't that great? Our house smelled so good and we weren't allowed to eat any of it. <laughs> and then he would have us kids make um, cards or write notes for the veterans that we were going to give the apple pies to. And when I was a kid, I didn't know the difference between a veteran and a veterinarian. Do you know the difference? Oh, good for you. Okay. So sometimes my cards include like drawings of cats and things like that. God bless my dad. He still gave everybody the, the cards. And then he would have us kids go along to help deliver the apple pies. And you know what? What I noticed was that the people who got the apple pies were really happy. But you know who was the most happy? My dad was the most happy because <laughs> he was so happy to share those gifts with other people. So in honor of the people who teach us to share, we're going to give out treats today to everybody, okay? Are you willing to help me do that? Do you, If any of the other kids want to help, you can't. Okay, good. So um, thank you. If you can help me hand these out to everyone. So if you want to take, like I said, it's kind of a mix. I think this is one of those days where unless you really don't want sugar, everybody gets one. If you really don't want sugar, we'll give you the cheddar buddies. Otherwise, we're just going to pass these out kind of randomly. Okay, can you go give these out to people? Yeah, take a bunch. Take as many as you can and go hand them out, okay? You can go ahead, too. Yeah, you can carry the bucket. Kyrie, why don't you go to the back of the room? And we'll move our. We'll move this way. Yeah, so he can't have sugar, right? Do you want some cheddar bunnies instead? Is that okay? But can you have a chocolate kiss? Do you want more to hand out? Is he done? <laughs> okay, so you want to come back and keep helping Brooks? Do you want to hand it out? No, that's just one. Okay, we're going to pass these down.
grandparents and mentors and all those who teach us what a gift it is to be able to share. And we thank you for always being our Heavenly Father who is with us no matter what. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy. So we remember today that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We do want to welcome you all to communion this day. It looks like, I think everyone is familiar with how we offer communion. Um, and again, so as you come forward, if you're not wearing that name tag, though, I might be asking you for your name. That's everything you need to know. The table's been prepared, and all are welcome.
Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to guide us, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending song is Go Make Disciples.
Oh, yeah. 